we're going to show you how to do a transformation. Right now I have two tubes frozen top of themselves. You can see that they're still frozen right out of the minus 80. What we want to do is we want to warm them up so that they begin to thaw in our hands. If there's any droplets on the sides of the tubes, we want to flick that down. The goal here is we want to warm them up until they just begin to thaw and then we're going to put them directly onto ice. Competent cells will perform the best if they are flash frozen and if they are uh, flash warmed up. Not to mention this is faster so some protocols will actually tell you that you should uh, thaw them on ice which can take more than half an hour. That is not necessary and that will waste a lot of your time. It should only take about a minute or so for the competent cells to start to thaw. And here you can see that the cells are starting to thaw. You can start to see that it's liquid at the bottom of the tip of the tube. We do not have to thaw them all the way. Now you can see that the liquid is moving. That needs to go on ice. You see here that the liquid is moving. If I flick it, that needs to go on ice. So competent cells need to be kept cold at all times other than when they're being heat shocked. We need to label our tubes with something that'll let you uh, get your right transformation onto the right plate. A lot of protocols are also going to tell you that you should um, let them sit on ice for a long time. This is also not necessary. I'm going to add one microliter to this plasma for one transformation. Open this up quickly. I put that one microliter in there. Close it up and get it back on ice. And I'm going to pipe that one microliter of this ligation into the other tube of competent cells. These competent cells have been made by the um, Inu method, which produces ultra-competent cells. Once the DNA has been added, you're going to flick this slightly, like this, to mix the DNA. And now they're ready to be transformed. You do not need to let them sit on ice for many minutes. Uh, to do the transformation, we're going to add a heat shock in a 45, I mean, in a 42 degree water bath for 45 seconds. I'm going to transfer these, these transformation tubes, these competent cells, into a foam rack that will float. It's still on ice right now. I have my timer set at 45 seconds. And I'm going to drop them into this, into this water bag and start the timer. You see they're floating in there. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Get our confidence cells out of here, put them directly onto ice. And then we'll start the timer for two minutes. They should be on two minutes on ice. We can take them out of this um, foam floating rack and put them directly um, into the ice. Put this away. The theory is that the heat shock 
um, opens up the membranes a little bit so that plasmids can get in and the ice then seals up the membrane so the plasmid is trapped in there and the cells have their membrane integrity. That's the theory of this. Now there's two different things, we have two different plasmids here. One is a, a canamycin resistant plasmid and one has an ampicillin resistance. Ampicillin is a unique case where um, we do not have to do what's called a recovery step after the transformation. Basically, we can play ampicillin transformations directly after this two minutes on ice. Um, on the other hand, canamycin is going to require a recovery step. So after this two minutes on ice, we're going to add some LB broth and place these cells in shaking for uh, up 20 to 30 minutes at 37 degrees. This will allow some time for the canamycin resistance gene to be expressed and to counteract the, um, the canamycin antibiotic, which inhibits protein translation. On the other hand, ampicillin, uh, ampicillin inhibits cell wall synthesis. So a protein is, a, a cells are able to do both transcription and translation, and they're able to express the ampicillin resistance gene even though, even though they're in the presence of ampicillin. That's why they do not need a recovery. Our timer is almost up. Take these guys off of ice. Nice and wait. We don't need that anymore. So for for the canamycin resistant plasma, what I'm going to do is I have 200 microliters of competent cells. Um, I'm going to add 500 milliliters of LB broth to the tube directly. And I'll put that at 37 degrees for shape. Now you don't have to use 200 microliters of competent cells. You could use as little as 10 microliters of competent cells. The general rule is don't put more than about 5% of the volume of competent cells. Um, like don't put more than 5% volume of DNA um, that you have competent cells. So I'm going to be back in a second. I'm going to put this to shake at 37 degrees. So we can. Um, we, on the other hand, we can plate our ampicillin uh, resistant plasma transformation right away. Make sure you label your plates with the desired, desired uh, label before you start. You're going to need some 95% ethanol in a beaker. You're going to need a, a glass hockey puck, and in this case, it's made from a pasture pipette. And what we're going to do you know what? You're going to want to come closer. Come closer. I see this here, right? So we have our our transformation here. We have our plate that is labeled. I'm going to add the entire transformation. To the plate. Throw away the tube. And then 95% ethanol is, is for um, lighting things on fire for sterilizing. Sterilizing by flaming. So get ethanol on there and catch that on fire. If you're not sure whether you did it good, you should see a flame. You can always do it again. Get it in there again. We should see a flame. If you don't see a flame, you don't know it's sterile. And then you're going to take this and you're just going to let it sit by its own weight on the auger plate. And you're going to just gently rotate the plate until the, until the bacteria is evenly covering the plate. 
if you see some areas that look like they have more, move it around so that it covers fairly evenly. And you close the plate up. Put your glass spreader into the fire again, and it's ready to go for the next time. Five minutes. Um, this thing has been shaking. Arcanomycin, um, arcanomycin resistant plasma transformation. So we have a lot more volume because we have LB broth there, along with the transformation. So what we're going to do is we're going to collect the cells by spinning them for 30 seconds at maximum speed in a, in a tabletop centrifuge. Now that we've collected our cells by centrifuging, they're at the bottom the bottom of the tube. We know that we have 500 microliters of uh, LB broth in there and we know that we have 200 microliters of competent cells for a total of 700 microliters. So what I'm going to simply do is pipette away the 500 microliters of LB broth. So my pipette are at 500 microliters. I put that away and we're left with 200 microliters. And then I'm going to use my pipette to resuspend those cells. Once they're resuspended, I'm going to Move them over to this plate that was labeled already. It has to make sure to label your plates before you um, before you plate on them, so things don't get mixed up. Okay. Now again, we need to have our glass spreader that we're gonna that we're gonna um, dip in 95% ethanol and catch on fire. If you'd like to come in close here, we're going to use the glass spreader on its own weight. Do not put extra pressure on it, and we're going to just gently spin the plate around until the cells are evenly coating the plate. Here we have a lot of bubbles. It doesn't matter. Um, the bubbles will eventually pop when, as they dry see here that we have a fairly even coating of bacteria across the plate. We then finally close the plate up. You can see the bubbles are popping at, as I'm talking here. And finally we'll wrap up by re-sterilizing um, our glass spreader, basically killing any of the transgenic E. coli that is there. Turn off our fire. And then we're going to take both of these plates Put them in the 37 degree incubator. Um, if they are very wet, if they are actually very wet, we're gonna you're, you're gonna want to put them in right side up. But in general, if the, if the if the bacteria is absorbed into the plate, like in this case, you can see that it is absorbed into the plate, other than those bubbles, and nothing is moving much. The optimal place, the optimal way to incubate a plate is upside down. 37 degree incubator. Thank you for watching.